بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وبعد يسرني نيابة عن وزارة التربية والتعليم ممثلة في وكالة الوزارة للتخطيط والتطوير أن أرحب بكم جميعا متحدثين وحضور في هذه الجلسة المسائية التي سيتناول فيها المتحدثان التعليم والتعلم في مجتمع المعرفة طبعا متحدثنا الثاني لم يحضر حتى اللحظة فبالتالي سنبدأ مع متحدثنا الأول متحدثنا الأول هو الدكتور أوشو سليمان الدكتور أوشو سليمان حاصل على درجة دكتوراه في الإعلام والتنوع الثقافي كذلك حاصل على شهادة دبلوماسية ثقافية عام 2011 حاصل على درجة الماجستير في الإدارة العامة عام 2001 كذلك محاضرنا لهذه الجلسة أيضاً حاصل على درجة الماجستير في فن التواصل كذلك أيضاً حاصل على شهادة في اللغة العربية والدراسات الإسلامية عام 1905 وتسعين كذلك لديه دبلوم وطني عالي في الاتصال الجماهيري عام 1985 الدكتور أوشو سليمان محاضر في جامعة إبردين في المملكة المتحدة كما عمل قبل ذلك محاضرا في جامعة القاهرة في مصر ما بين عام 2004 إلى 2011 كذلك كان محاضرا في معهد الدبلوماسية الثقافية في برلين في ألمانيا كذلك عمل قبل ذلك في جامعة آدو آي كيتي في نيجيريا من عام 1999 إلى عام 2001 قبل ذلك أيضا كان يعمل في جامعة عثمان دان فوديو سكوتو عام 1994 إلى عام 1997 كذلك قبل ذلك كان يعمل في كلية زليخة بيولا للغة العربية والدراسات الإسلامية من عام 1300 من عام 1993 إلى عام 1995 أي مقدمة جلسة طيب أوكي سو أي وود لايك تو ويلكم أول أوف يو إن ذا سيشن أون بيهاف ذا مينستري أوف إديوكيشن أند ذا Deputy Minister for the Developing and Planning, our presenter for today is Dr. Osho Suleiman. Dr. Osho Suleiman <coughs> got a, a PhD degree in media and multiculturalism. Also, Dr. Suleiman has certificate in Cultural Diploma 2011. Also, he got the Master of Public Administration in 2000, 2001. Also, he has a Master of Communication Arts, 1997. Also, he has Certificate in Arabic and Islamic Study, 1995. Also, he has a Higher National Diploma in Mass Communication, 1985. Dr. Suleim, Dr. Oshu, a lecturer in University of Aberdeen, United Kingdom, nowadays. Also, he was a lecturer in Cairo University, Egypt, from 2004 to 2011. Also, he was uh, in the Institute for Culture, Cultural uh, Diplomacy in Berlin, Germany. Also, University of Ado, Nigeria, between 1999 and 2001. Before that, he was in University of Abadan, Nigeria, between 1994 and 1997. Before that, he was in Osman Dan Fodo University, uh, and he was in Zuleikha College of Arabic and Islamic Study. I would like to welcome Dr. Osho Suleiman to give his presentation. Thank you, sir. 
Dr. Suleiman, you have 25 minutes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I must first thank the government and the people of uh, this uh, great country, the Kingdom of uh, Saudi Arabia, for inviting me for this uh, presentation to share my ideas with you on education and learning in knowledge society. I am deeply honored because uh, as a Muslim, as a student of Islamic studies, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is regarded as the first country for all the Muslims in the world. And this is the place of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is the place of birth, and this is the source of Islam from Adam, and this is also the place where the first and the last religion, Islam, was institutionalized by the Almighty Allah. I feel greatly honored to be here, especially to discuss about education and knowledge and intellectualism, which is the basis of humanity. And when we look at the philosophical foundation of man himself, man has been enthroned with the power of knowledge, with the power of education, with the power of intellectualism, above the angels, above the brute animals, and above all other creatures of the Almighty God. For this is a great thing to come and discuss about knowledge in the source of knowledge itself, which is Saudi Arabia. Well, my outline is uh, on, uh, I'm going to look at the introduction of the topic. I'll look at education. I'll look at the goals of education, the purposes of education, the types of education, the methodology of education, learning, methodology of learning, knowledge society, dimensions of knowledge society, the basis of education in knowledge society, then the forms of learning in knowledge society, the basic challenges of education and learning in the knowledge society, and the options for development of education and learning in a knowledge society, then I'll look at the conclusion. Basically, education and learning are the basis of knowledge society which makes intellectualism the epitome of development of values, virtues, and mind of the people. As Aristotle notes, that educating the mind without educating the art is no education at all. And of course, since education is our passport, and indeed the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare for it today. It becomes imperative for different countries of the world to attain the level of a knowledge society where education will be the catalyst for development. What is this education? Education entails so many things. Um, is a social science concept. So we have very meanings given to education by various scholars. But I want to look at education from the perspective of Hutchins, who talks about education as implying teaching, whereby teaching implies knowledge, and knowledge is the truth. The truth is everywhere the same. Hence, education should be everywhere the same. I do not overlook the possibilities of differences in organization, in administration, in local habits and customs. These are matters of uh, details. Then let us look at the goals of education. 
But before then, there are basic principles that guides education. Education must be based on truth. Education must be based on justice. Education must be based on fairness. Education must be based on good character. Education must be based on the principle of ensuring that the society is better than we met it. Because the almighty God has enthroned man with the power of knowledge above all other creatures with knowledge. Therefore, we have everything that it takes to make the world a better place than we met it. But what are the basic goals of education? They include the dissemination of knowledge. Because education is meant to disseminate knowledge. It's meant to improve our intelligence. Education is meant to improve our character, our behaviors, our values, and to improve the mind of man to be good, and to improve our art to be pure. Education is meant to eradicate ignorance, to make the society a good place to live. And education imbues the issue of national development. Education is also about the acquisition of skills and knowledge, intellectualism in the society, and education is about the ensuring that the customs of the people, the culture of the people, the tradition of the people, transmitting a generation from one generation to the other, making the, the transmission of the tradition, the customs, and the culture should be improved upon the vices, the bad things that we have in our culture that are bad are meant to be purified by the goal of education. And when you look at the period of the Jahiliya period, the period of ignorance, and when the only Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu came with the knowledge of the Quran, the knowledge of the Quran came to improve on the age of ignorance. So education is meant to wipe ignorance and to make, to clean the culture of the people, the customs and the tradition of the people to be pure. Then what are the purposes of education? Firstly, education is meant to develop our reasoning about perennial questions that may bother our mind. Why is society like this? Why are we having problems in society? Why, have we, uh, why are we having wars, crises, religious crises, ethnic crises, ethnic pogroms, political agitations? Why? Education is meant to uh, develop our reasoning to this level to, in order to be able to find solutions to the vagaries and the uncertainties of life. Secondly, education is meant to ensure that they master the, we master the methods of scientific inquiry, also to cultivate intellect, to create positive change agents in the society, to develop our spirituality. Because the first creature of God, Adam, by the time God wanted to imbue him with knowledge, his intellect was improved upon, his personality was improved upon, his spiritualism was improved upon, physical, intellect, and spiritualism. So it's very important that is one of the purposes of education is to improve our spirituality and to model a democratic society whereby we have equal rights, equal expression, expre uh, freedom of expression, freedom of association. These are the basic uh, democratic uh, principles that education has also come to bring about. Also to develop every human, every individual to their full potential. 
And education, whatever you call it, is seeks to indoctrinate the pupils and the students as world leaders and to become responsible citizens in the society. And education is also a purpose of education to develop high-skilled human capital for a state or for a country or for a nation. Types of education. <coughs> I'll be able to identify three basic types of education. Firstly is formal education in schools from the elementary level to the tertiary institutions. There's also what I decided to call the semi-formal education through the home, <coughs> because the first education that any child receives are from the parents, especially the mothers. And that is why it's said by one of these of the prophet that uh, when you educate a woman, you are educating a nation. Because the women are the first educators of our children. Therefore, it is essential for women to be well educated, morally, spiritually, physically, mentally, intellectually. This uh, semi formal education through the home is very important. We have the mass media and the new media of the internet, the social media, among others. And also, we have the basic informal education through the peer groups, associations, and interactions through visitations and travels. Then let us look at the basic methodology of education. Firstly, we have the educational planning and management. Because you need to plan education. The population is expanding every day. This expansion of population, you need to plan for it. If you are having 60, <coughs> excuse me, if you are having 65% of the population in Saudi Arabia in the bracket age of the youths of one to one to 40, then you need to plan because they are moving from one level to the other every year and more children are coming out so there must be proper planning and management for the education of these uh, children. Then the curricular development is a method of education whereby the content of the education that is being given to the students at the primary, at the elementary level, to the secondary level, and then to the tertiary institution must be improved regularly because things are changing every day. The curricula that you use in the last five years may not be okay today because things are changing every day. We're having various types of improvements in the politics, in the economy, in the social cultural system, in, in, in the society. Therefore, the curricula in the schools must be made to meet up with the new challenges in science, in technology, in the new information technology. All these things are very important <coughs> in the curricula development. Thirdly, is the provision of infrastructure for the students in the classrooms, in the education equipment, the equipping the libraries, which is the the, the basis, the, 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 the basic uh, 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 art of education in an establishment. Because the library is the engine room where you have stored the knowledge, is the mug. We call it mug in journalism, and it, it is the mug. And uh, this mug must be improved regularly with the new information, with the new technology and the new books that are coming out. The laboratories, the workshops, the sports facilities, and of course, <coughs> for you to have sound education, you must create a good, conducive environment to learning. The environment must be fantastic. And one of the things that I've learned in, in Europe is creating a conducive environment. They, they may provide a, a, 
a, a small place for you, but the environment will be conducive to that learning, which is very, very important. Then the recruitment of good teachers and support staff, the acceptable student teacher ratio, and uh, UNESCO has suggested 20 to 25 students to a teacher for effective education and learning. And teaching and stimulation of thoughts, because the essence of education is just to stimulate your thoughts, to make you to think. It's not, the teacher is not meant only to teach, but to stimulate the thoughts of the students, to make them to think, to be independent-minded, <coughs> to be able to ask probing questions. These are the essence of uh, uh, education. It's a method of uh, education. And learning through listening, rapt attention, reading, homework assignments, <coughs> tutorials, debates, tests, examinations, then the grading of the students, among others. <coughs> learning, of course, is the process of seeking for knowledge through formal, the semi-informal, and the informal education for improved knowledge, for improved skills, for improved technical know-how, and for good character for societal good. But what we also have the methodology of learning. How do you learn? How do you seek for knowledge? We have the classroom assimilation, and of course, the reading of recommended texts and general books and journals. At least, if you want true education, you should go to the library, either physical texts or we have the virtual library online. Travels and excursions is very important. <coughs> and this is because the world is a book. The old world is regarded as a book. And those who do not travel, they read only one page of a book. So it's important to travel around the world. And Muslims have been told there is several lay in the Quran. To, you travel to the, to the world and see the wonders that I have done in the world to be able to appreciate me more. And the prophet himself, he talks about knowledge, that we should seek for knowledge, even if it is as far as China. And I think China is still a very a long distance. Of course, the writing is very important. As a student of education, as a student of mass communication, as a student of journalism, as a student of broadcasting, as a student of advertising, as a student of public relations, as a student of media, as a student of multiculturalism, I know that writing is the key thing that can liberate you. Because writing is very essential, you must improve the skill of writing. It is not enough for students to just be having the modern facilities around it, you must make them to write. You must challenge them to write. Before you can write, you must read. There's no way you cannot, you will not read before you can write. Dr. Writing Suleiman. is essential. Dr. Suleiman, you have this five is what minutes. can get you there. You have five and minutes. we have to obey the school rules. You have five, five minutes, minutes more. How can Okay, I will accelerate now. <laughs> You have to obey the rules and regulations in conformity with the goal of indoctrination, simulation of thought through computer games and all that, <coughs> the writing and all of that. Let me move forward. The knowledge society, we have discussed this, and a lot of scholars have discussed this, and it is to ensure that we use knowledge as a basic ingredient for development in the society. The mentions of knowledge in society comprise of an expanded scientific, technical, and educational spheres. It involves the complex ways of processing and circulating knowledge and information in a service-based economy, and it entails the basic changes in how governments, <coughs> corporations, establishments, and corporate organizations function so that they enhance continuous innovation in policies, programs, and activities. The base of education in, in, uh, in knowledge uh, society, I think I have discussed about this. Because of time, I will have to accelerate quickly. Um, let's, let's look at the, the 
basic challenges of education. The world population is expanding. Today, the world is 7 billion. And uh, in, by the year 2050, by, it is going to be 9 billion. So it's expanding. And we are going to have shortage of teachers by 8 million by UNESCO estimation within the next three years, including Saudi Arabia. There will be shortage of teachers in the world. So like a school attitude of, the, of government world leaders to education is a problem. Poor remuneration of teachers, lack of professionalism of teaching, low budget for education, as against 25% recommended by UNESCO. Problem of globalization is good, it has its own evil. Wars and political agitations in various countries, including the MENA states, refugees, problems, deadly diseases of HIV and AIDS, poverty in the world, world economic recession, emerging cultures of gays, lesbianism, and other immoral acts. What are the basic options? Making teaching the mother of all professions through improved remunerations and condition of service. The countries that are moving forward today that are having scientific discoveries and inventions and innovations today are the countries that are providing enough money for their teachers. They pay their teachers better than all other professionals. And we are supposed to attract best brains into teaching, professionalism of the teaching, <coughs> and we need to improve the student ratio one to 20, to improve the infrastructure in the classroom, libraries, workshops, laboratories, and all that, then the regular expansion and improvement of infrastructure through the planning and implementation. Autonomy of teachers is very essential because oh, if you over-administer the teachers, it reduces their sense of creativity, innovation. Then the freedom of expression for pupils to be able to express themselves, to be able to ask questions is essential. <coughs> Sound knowledge and orientation for the student through indoctrination as world leaders. Then the teaching and learning through the first language or indigenous uh, languages. Then the regular training of the teachers <coughs> to meet up with the new innovations and inventions in, the, in technology and the true political will of the government to develop education. My conclusion, the government in different parts of the world should realize that education is the cornerstone of nation building. Hence, there must be political will to improve education through proper funding and strict monitoring of the finances to ensure One that minute. they are properly announced towards improving the quality of education. One minute. The high degree of immorality in the world today and the challenges of wars, ethnic pogroms, civil strife, political agitation, terrorism, gay issues are brought to the fore the moral question in education and learning. There is urgent need to incorporate moral education in the professional development of the teachers and learning generally. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Suleiman. Finishing your presentation and the time. Thank you. Aydan, باسمكم جميعا نرحب بسعادة الدكتور ناصر منصور محاضرنا الثاني لهذه الجلسة الدكتور ناصر منصور أيضا سيتكلم عن موضوع التعليم والتعلم في مجتمع المعرفة الدكتور ناصر منصور حاصل على شهادة الدكتوراه في فلسفة التربية عام 2008 من جامعة إكستر في المملكة المتحدة كذلك حاصل على درجة الماجستير في المناهج وطرق التدريس من جامعة طنطا في مصر عام 1998 كذلك حاصل على دبلوم خاص في التربية من جامعة طنطا عام 1995 وحاصل على شهادة البكالوريوس من جامعة طنطا في مصر عام 1993 من قسم الفيزياء والكيمياء كذلك الدكتور ناصر محاضر حاليا في جامعة إكستر في المملكة المتحدة أيضا عمل في العديد من الجهات قبل ذلك لعل من أبرزها مركز تميز العلوم الرياضيات في جامعة الملك سعود عام 2010 أيضا الدكتور ناصر عضو في العديد من مجلات البحث العلمي كذلك له العديد من البحوث العلمية المنشورة حاصل أيضا على العديد من الجوائز و 
له ايضا العديد والعديد والعديد الذي يطول فينا المقام لذكره. Our second lecturer is Dr. Nasser Mansour. Dr. Nasser Mansour got his PhD in the philosophy of education 2008 from University of Exeter, United Kingdom. Also has got his degree of Master of Education in curriculum and instruction from Kanta University in Egypt. 1998. Before that, got his degree of special diploma in education from Tanta University, 1995. Dr. Nasser has the bachelor degree, uh, 1993, from Tanta University in Egypt, from the Department of Physics and Chemistry. Dr. Nasser also, uh, before, he is a lecturer now in extra University in UK. Before that, he worked in King Saud University in the Excellence Center of uh, Science and Mathematic uh, Education. Also, Dr. Mansour is a member in many editorial uh, boards and has many uh, publications. Dr. Mansour own many awards and so on. Welcome. Dr. Mansour. Thank you. عفوا لدينا طبعا رئيس الجلسة أنا الدكتور عثمان الزامل مقرر الجلسة الأستاذ خالد آل سلطان ومعنا أيضا الأخت سعاد السعد هي مقررة الجلسة في السكشن الثاني عند الأخوات. تفضل دكتور منصور. يا الاخوان في الكنترول فوق اعرضوا لنا محاضره الدكتور ناصر منصور كنترول الاخوان في الكنترول عندنا محاضر ثاني في هذه الجلسه دكتور ناصر منصور فضلا عرض المحاضره الله يرضى عليكم استغلالا للوقت طيب اخوان يعني استغلالا استغلالا للوقت حتى لا يضيع علينا الوقت يعني نفتح باب النقاش في محاضره الدكتور اوشو سليمان وي ويل اوبن ذا ديسكشن ان دكتور اوشو سليمان لكتشر سو اني وان هاز ا كويستشن بليز وي نيد جاست انتربريتيشن or a remark or comment within one minute. Within one minute. Just please, within one minute. Okay, go ahead. Sound, please. Thank you very much. In the name of Allah and the peace upon you. Thank you very much, Professor. Um, indeed, there is some efforts try to recognize the society knowledge or knowledge of society, as you know. Until now, I'm looking forward to defining some main concept of society of knowledge. I agree with you that your, your presentation is very significant based in objectives, tasks, curriculum development, and so on. Now, kindly, would you define if someone company in institutes trying to develop a new curriculum based in society of knowledge. What is the main... Thank you. Thank you, please. What Thank is you. the main Just characteristics minute, please. of that and also teaching Thank you. how the characteristics of that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank for you. you. Thank you. We'll have another question from the ladies section. 
الأخوات سؤال من الأخوات الأخوات إذا في سؤال أو نعطي الإخوان سؤال آخر السلام عليكم السلام ورحمة الله هي توكت أبوت مورالتي إن إدوكيشن هاو هاو تو إنتروديوس مورالتي إن إدوكيشن فروم هيز بيرسبكتيف أوكي ثانك يو شكرا دكتور أوشو well thank you for the basic points the first uh, issue of uh, the basic uh, ingredients of uh, of the knowledge uh, society i was able to discuss that i was able to identify that because the uh, knowledge society is the new thing now after the industrial revolution and after the information and uh, revolution the new concept in the world now is to have a knowledge based society whereby the knowledge the acquisition of knowledge education and intellectualism will be the basis for development politically economically and socioculturally and whatever you want to do if it is not based on knowledge it's not going to last so the whatever the the government is trying to do the policies of government should be geared towards uh, ensuring that dr Osho, a minute is, for answer please uh, based on uh, knowledge politically economically and socioculturally okay. and the uh, madam that asked about the moral question because the we have to incorporate in the in the curricula the moral education the, you have the islamic studies the morality contained in the in the chastity of women the ensuring the all the morality in the society it has no other way than that and uh, you have the idea of gay lesbianism being promoted these are emerging cultures in uh, in the world and uh, they are these are not acceptable cultures uh, stripping the women naked and all these and if the teacher is not an epitome of good character if a teacher is not an epitome of morality if a teacher is not an epitome of good manners then there is no way you can transfer knowledge and good character to the students so that is why we must incorporate this in the curricula for the teachers and also for the students it's very essential shukran, shukran dr sliman la khawat in the fee soal السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. السلام ورحمة الله. تحدث سعادة الدكتور عن أنواع التعليم بأن من أنواعها الإعلام أو التعلم التعلم الإعلامي. طبعا يعتبر أحد أخطر وأهم أنواع التعلم وأقواها في هذا الوقت تأثيرا. هذا يعتبر أحد أنواع التحديات القوية. كيف نستطيع مواجهة هذا التحدي بتعزيز الإيجابيات والوقوف ضد السلبيات ومعالجتها؟ شكرا. شكرا أيضا إذا عند الأخوات سؤال آخر ونعمل الاختصار في السؤال ولا التحديد يعني بشكل دقيق هيت ذا بوينت I think she was talking about the media في في سؤال الأخوات أو ما في سؤال طيب شكرا الأخوات أيضا عن الأخوان الاخوان اذا في سؤال الدكتور اوشو سليمان قبل ان ننتقل لمحاضرنا الاخر ترى ما نشوف زين يا اخوان اذا في احد يرفع يده بشكل عالي شكرا شكرا لكم جميعا اوكي جو اهيد المايك يورز اي ثينك شي واز توكينج اباوت ذا ايجو اوف ذا ميديا از ميديا بيرسون ذات از براكتس جورناليزم براكتس uh and also a columnist in the newspaper also broadcasting on radio having weekly programs on radio 
the last 15, 16 years. So I know that the media is very powerful. The media can be very, very powerful. Because when you sit in the studio as a broadcaster, you are talking to millions of people outside there. So, and the information that the media disseminates is very, very essential because the media does not only set agenda for development, the media dictate the pace for development in the society and they dictate the pace of debate, Thank of you. issues to be discussed. Therefore, it's very essential that the, the, the basic way is just for the Muslim world to wake Thank up. Thank you, Dr. Salema. Uh, just to... seven times. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Mansour, the mic is yours. First of all, I would like to say <coughs> thanks so much for this kind invitation. Yes. Um, and I would like to thank the organizers for thinking about the theme of this conference or of this forum. I think it is very much needed um, for not just Saudi Arabia, it is much needed for all over the world. And it is a concern everywhere now. I would just like just to start where I'm coming from. So I'm coming from Dr. 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 Nasser, University. Dr. Dr. Nasser, you have 25 minutes. You have 25 minutes. 25 minutes, thanks. So just coming from southwest England, if you don't know where this extra is, but I think it's, it's on the map. Uh, living in a very lovely city in Exeter. University of Exeter, one of the top universities in the UK. And I think that's a tip for all of us. I will always say, wherever you go, talk about your institution. I think it deserves maybe 30 seconds. Um, we are fifth in the world in, in UK on research and fourth in times by grading bar times good universities. This is how um, my interest in research, so you can understand where I'm coming from. So I'm very much interested in science, technology, and society, scientific literacy, very much like. Uh, to research, about research, religion and science education, thinking and 21st century, and so on. Presentation today. On the presentation today, I will just focus on three elements or three uh, topics. The first topic I will start with is teacher voices, uh, sorry, student voices or student concerns. Always when we start such these uh, presentations, we always start from big names, Jean Dewey or Vygotsky or Jean Piaget. We always start from big theoretical framework. I think on the knowledge age, we have to change um, the way we think in the knowledge age. So I will kick off my presentation by student concerns. After this, I will just maybe a few points about what knowledge edge means. I think lots of speakers have already covered this. And how can we support teachers? I think this is a key point for me. Think about the transition. To, to make transition for the knowledge edge, we have to ask ourselves a key question. What is the, t what is the timeline for us, for the transition here in Saudi Arabia. Do you have a deadline? Do you have a time that you say, yeah, today I made the transition for the 21st century or to the knowledge age? So thinking about the kickoff time or the starting time, think about the timeline is important. Our teachers are very um, are good in this. They always have a learning objective. They always say, yeah, we will achieve this by the end of this uh, of this day. So I think we should do this. We should have a deadline. We, we should say, by 2025, 2030, we will be in the knowledge age. I think this is quite important. But most important, when we think about the transition, we always need to think about our motivation, why we need the knowledge age, why we need the knowledge society. We need to think about and to change our attitude 
the way we think about the knowledge age, the way we think about our students. And that's what I'm going to start with. Here is um, a competition which was launched by um, a Guardian newspaper in UK. And if you don't know, uh, the, um, Guardian, the Guardian newspaper is one of the most influential newspapers in the life of British people. They drive the life of British people. So, in 2001, they launched this competition to students. They say, the school I would like, just one question. And they, send, they sent this question to all the schools, starting from four years old till 16 years old. And I will show you some of the responses of these students. And when you hear these students, you don't need to hear me, you don't need to hear any experts at all. They are experts in the area we are talking about. They are experts in the area of knowledge age. And I will make it today an invitation for all of you. Each one in a school, at university, newspaper, just ask one question. Ask the students one question. The school you would like, describe it. Here's the talk about school buildings. When we make a transition to the knowledge age, we need to think about starting from the building. It's important for them. I got here my first expert. He's uh, four years old, saying, I want lots of colors. Of course, the colors is very important. Think about Du Bono when he thought about the six thinking hats. How clever when he used the colors. And I will come to this point later on. So thinking about, about colors can stimulate our creativity, can stimulate our students' creativity. This from four years old. The school building should be huge cylinder. The buildings and subject on each floor. We think this is a good idea because the teacher cannot tell you to stand in the corner. How many of us stand in, the, in this corner? I was one of them. They thought about how much they are hurted by this punishment. So the building is important. An honest and own base room where you can go at your own pace in English and math and work from any textbook. They get fed up with the curriculum. They know what they are doing. They just need resources. They need space. And then you can go to a marking machine where you put your work in one end and it comes out market the other end. It's not about the marking machine they are talking about. It's the way we give them the feedback. They don't like it. We give feedback with numbers, but alongside emotions. We give somebody five out of 10, but the way you deliver it, the way you say it, they don't like it. They don't like to, 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 to deal with us. Making machine or marking machine will be good for them. Just a very quick here, there would be also be many comfortable and informal meeting places for creative interaction in small groups on key issues, not just on the syllabus, but also wider issues, occurring locally and elsewhere. Just before I go to this point, this last point is very important. The basic aspect of the buildings we are taught in do not promote learning but instead enhance feelings of negativity. That's from 15 years old. I'm not going to carry on, but the last point, even thinking about the toilets. The toilets can be a matter for a child. The toilets feel like you are underwater with a sound track, and it is done by using the same way as a picture on the cinema, so the walls have water and sea animals also. It is the shape of a bubble. Who do you think about this? They think about all the details. Ask them the school you would like. About knowledge and curriculum, 
What are their concerns about knowledge and the curriculum? I believe the curriculum should contain the need for experiences. That what is the knowledge age and the knowledge society is about. It's about our school. It's about where they are going to work, where they are going to live. Such as, I go into the beach, the country sign, a table tennis match to a, to a farm. But even this, think about the table tennis. I think I will be very happy in my classroom to teach Newton laws. I can teach the Newton law by playing a table tennis. I can play all the science in the world, just in the farm. I think more time should be devoted to art, design, and technology. I think we should go on more trips. We call it informal learning. They don't have idea about concepts, but we do. They don't have, they just concern about actions, but we concern about key concepts. I think we should change rules, shift our paradigms, how to think about ideas, put them forward, ask them, interact with them. I think when I asked you a first, the first question about the kick off, or the timeline, I meant this. When you listen to your students, I think you made it. You were successful to, tran to transfer yourself to the knowledge age. Without this, I don't guarantee. There is no guarantee that you will be in the knowledge age. Just um, comment about learning, which was great, the first comment, when they said, some parents or grandparents didn't have the facilities or technology when they were at school, which is why I think that one a week, they should be able to come into school and learn about some of the new teaching methods in the curriculum with their children. What a great idea. An academic city of learning, that is the same idea that Dr. Ahmed Zawal in Egypt is thinking of and is working on now. But it's coming from a child. This new school will be almost like a university, as we will have the freedom, the freedom, the freedom of a choice and opinion and opinion. They need to have a say on their life, in their education. I think to make a transition, you should do this. Not treated as mobs. For such a large school, they, however, will be trained accordingly and learn to treat us as individuals. We call it special education needs. We call it individuals. Call it what you call it. They don't concern much about concepts. They concern about actions. This is for the teacher. Teachers should not mind if we have an opinion. It's a matter. Rightly or wrong, the power relationships between peoples and teachers are unequal. We cannot have knowledge age and still the relationship is unequal. In most schools, but I think that teachers frequently abuse their authority. I tell you a story, just to break it down a little bit. I was teaching in Exeter just Last term, I was teaching about ICT in science education. Just after two sessions, I, after I finished my second session, I, I went to my room, I found the door, knock, knock, knock. I found two, two students from my, from my teachers coming to my room and said, very polite. They said, listen, we have now two sessions with you. We didn't learn anything. We know everything you are saying. I think you are wasting our time. Okay, what did you do? If your student come to you you're as a teacher, as educator, at university, wherever you teach, at nursery, and your students come to say you are wasting our time. The ICT I was teaching them was about virtual learning, was about interactive whiteboard, and how to use interactive whiteboard in dialogue, in argumentation. One session was about the 5E for inquiries. It was about virtual, um, virtual labs 
laboratories, how to use uh, online experimentation to develop teacher think student thinking, and so on. I believed that was advanced. However, my students in UK said, you are wasting our time. What did I do? I said, okay, I will do something about it. After they went, I have a word with the director of the program. I said, what happened? I said to, them, to him, I have two options. The first one has to be very fast. I think if I'm wasting my students' time, that should not try it. I will make this module optional. That is the fast thing. If they are happy to attend, that is fine. And beforehand, I will give a in detailed description about what I'm going to teach. And that's it. And on the second, on the long run solution, I think we should get their needs for the new students and we take it from there. That's what I understand by authority. Authority is responsibility, okay? I think we should have um, a teach the teacher day. That's what these students say. We can teach the, the, the teachers how it feels to be a kind and see how hard and fast we have to do our work and so we can set the standard. They can set the standard. They can sort teachers out. They know what they are, what they are doing. The last thing I will say the teachers can tell us what they think of us, but in a dream, not in the knowledge age, but in a dream, a school we, we could tell the teacher what we think of them. So we can could write them reports and give them marks. Wouldn't it be nice if we could choose what teachers we wanted for every subject? And the last comment is very hard, but that is the one I like. Dr. Mansour, what five, I would change Dr. Mansour, five about minutes. the teacher is the Dr. way Mansour, they are paid. Dr. Mansour, five minutes. I would, I would make it that the teacher would only get paid if the people thought they were teaching properly. So it, it will be as pay as you go. I think that's a call for invitation for ask your student and listen to your student. If you can listen to your student, I think you made it to the knowledge age. You made it to the, to the knowledge society. If not, you are not going to go anywhere. And that's where I'm going to start in this last five minutes, this topic. What's this topic and this title is about? That's where I can, normally I can start this presentation. I think we made it a bigger challenge for the teachers. Do you know why? Because we asked the teacher to make transition to the 21st century, but our education and our context is still in the 20th century. That's a bigger challenge. I think we, we should change the context first. That's, that is our 20th century. That's what we have now. I think we still have the curriculum. We still have the core subject. We still have the assessment. I think that is the 21st century. I think that is what should happen before we ask teacher to make transition. I call the knowledge, so you call it the knowledge society. I will call it learning society. It's kind of a process. It's an ongoing process. Just basics and very quick, I know most of, uh, most of speakers just touch on this. We need basic knowledge. We don't want knowledge in details. We need knowledge just to help us in dialogue and to, getting, to, to help us interaction with each other. We are not, we, should, don't, we, should, we shouldn't worry much about the quantity. No way you, you will get all the knowledge. I think we should worry much about how can we get access to the knowledge. And the way I'm saying how can we get access to the, to the knowledge, we should teach our students how to analyze the media. You got in the internet lots of information, that's fine, but some of them wrong, some of them right. I think they should get the literacy how to deal with this. And I'm just going just very quick because we don't need all of this. Just that is the point here about what is the skills that we need. And you get here Tony Wanger here from Harvard say, yeah, the school today practice and the much have skills of the future, but there is a gap. He calls this gap the skills of the knowledge age. 
thinking skills, creative thinking skills, critical thinking skills, curiosity, and so on. I think that's another transition we should make. We're still using blown taxonomy. When evaluation on the top of this uh, scheme, I think we should move ahead. We should move away from this and have the creativity on the top. That's another transition point we need to change about our education. We also need to look and teach beyond the knowledge society. What is the knowledge society? We need to acknowledge the social capital. All I was talking about is intellectual capital. But social capital is very much important. Social capital is about the pedagogy, is about teaching method, is about network, is about working together, is about dialogue. I think that is what we should live with. The social capital, that's how they like, that's how they are on. They are on Skype, on Facebook. So we need to do this. So. This call for rethinking about our seating plans, if we are thinking about knowledge edge, we, are, we need to think about how students are seating in the classroom. They are still seating like you are now. I am in the front, they are in front of me. I think we need to have movable desks. They can do it, they can change it as the pedagogy you will use. I think I will just end my presentation in two minutes and say, if I now ask you to give appreciation for the show and talk, which I'm giving now, I think most of you will be like this. That's where our students now. They are asleep. Maybe they are open eye, maybe their eyes are open, but believe me, they are not in the classroom. I want you to count the, these first three chairs. We have empty three chairs. Three seats are empty, all right? Notice the second slide here. When we change just to colored pens, what happened? They are all open eyes, and even we have one more. But if that is not all. The classroom for the knowledge age is like this. It can be like this. It can be like this. This is a primary school in UK, but it's not a typical primary school. It can be one-to-one -one laptop. It can be a group work. Different, it can be a smartphone. With, with all the affordances. Smartphone has internet, has a camera, you can write on a smartphone now. I think we should use this. But I will say, and I will argue, it's not about technology. It is about pedagogy. It is about the teacher. So do we know much about the teacher? I will just say, that is some pedagogies, but I will say here, just to end with, just that is the two studies we try to under teachers in the Excellence Center for uh, Science and the Mass Education. And we just ask a teacher, what do you want? What are the, your, your needs? And we ask the supervisors the same question. Amazingly, we get the priority for teachers where different from the priorities for their supervisors. Who do we believe? Do we believe the supervisors? Do we believe the teachers? I think I believe the teachers. The second study, which was about asking teachers, how do you like us to work with you, to train you? And we found this. That is, we asked them, what are the modules we offer you? And they say, that is the modules they offer us. On the top, out of school workshop. You take, this, you take the teachers out of school of the classroom, out of school of the school, and give them workshops. A minute. So, a minute. One minute, that's more than enough. So, thanks. So, that is the module we offer. Did it work? Did it work? So we ask them this question. We say, all right, these are the modules you have been to, they have been offered. What, what about the impact? And if you notice, out of school, workshops was on the top of the scale. That's what we offer much. And if, when you look at the impact, the impact, the out of school workshops comes first. That means what we offer doesn't make the impact as we expect as educators. So we ask them, how do you like us to train you? They hated the word training. They like it to be learning. And that is what it should in the knowledge aid. We should challenge our views about the way we deal with teachers. It is learning, not 
training. <clears throat> they know what they want. They just need support. And when we ask them about how do they like, after they learn something, how they can put it in practice, how they can enact this learning. And they Thank still you, say, Monsour. we need support. Thank you. That's great. That was Thank my you. last slide. <laughs> anyway. Thank so. you for a nice presentation. Thank you. We will now open the... We will open the discussion. من القسم عندنا هنا نحتاج سؤالين وأيضا من عند الأخوات فوق نحتاج إلى سؤالين تفضل يا أخ تفضل شيخ المايك عط المايك يا شيخ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم محمد سليمان البلوي من محافظة الوجه إن كان محاضرنا الفاضل ذكر بأن أتاه طالبان وقال له بأنه بأنه يضيع وقتهما فإننا في وطننا العربي تضيع الوقت أو إضاعة الوقت بشكل ممنهج ومخطط له في بوزارات التربية والتعليم التي تهدر الطاقات وتهدر الأموال في في تلك العملية في تلك العمل التعلم أو في العملية التعليمية التي تقدم للطلاب فهي لا تخدم واقع الطلاب فالواقع المعاش لا يعكس لا يعكس هذه الطاقات أو هذه الإمكانيات الموجودة نحن أخت أخت السراخي ادخل إلى السؤال مباشرة معك دقيقة القضية لدينا قضية معلم المعلم يستطيع أن يقولب المنهج أن يستطيع أن يصنع المعجزات شكرا إن أراد ذلك شكرا وأن يوفر له الوزارات ما يريد شكرا يا أخي شكرا لك لا نحتاج إلى الأخ ثاني تفضل يا شيخ أعطيت المايك هنا يا شيخ هنا 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 تحت تحت شوي هنا عند الأخ هي. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بشكر طبعا دكتور منصور على عرض العرض يعني هو بس في بعض التساؤلات لدكتور منصور جزئية حضرتك اللي عرضته طبعا في جزء منه كان في بريطانيا بتطبق في بريطانيا او في المملكة المتحدة. هل ينفع ان احنا نطبق حاجة زي كده في المدرسة العربية بالنسبة لمعايير تطبيق المدرسة العربية عندنا مثلا في السعودية او اي دولة. تاني حاجة حضرتك هنا ركزت على جزء التعلم من خلال فيسبوك او من خلال تويتر او سكاي بيم. هل ممكن اجمع ما بين ده وبين التفاعل ما بين المعلم والمتعلم؟ دي مشكلة بتقابلنا احنا كمدربين في مجال التدريب او المعلمين ان كتر طالب ما بيبقى على السكاي بي او على البلاك بيري اثناء المحاضرات بيفصل بينه وبين المدرب يعني. ثالث آه حاجة الاستخدام الامن للمعرفة، هل يوجد استخدام امن للمعرفة؟ واشكر حضرتك. شكرا دكتور منصور. No. Thanks for, the, for, for all the three questions. Anyway, I will make my, uh, my answer very sharp. For, for, the first, um, for the first session of my presentation, when I was talking about the Guardian newspaper, I think uh, that is the invitation I call everyone. It's about experience in UK, but experience by students. So yes, you can do it in Saudi Arabia. For the second question about uh, using, new, new, using Skype and, or Facebook or so on, I think Facebook is everywhere and students have access to it. I think we should go for the blended learning. If we can't use it in, in, this, in the um, current setting, I think you can do something about homework and so on, so students can go and find something and they can come discuss, discuss it. So it's a blended learning. For the first, for the fir for the um, uh, third question, if knowledge is sa secure or safe or not, I can't guarantee this. That's why we need to teach our students the ICT literacy. We need to teach them the skills. They will be able to judge this by themselves. You will not be with the students all the time. الأخوات الأخوات نحتاج سؤالين أيضا. عطل أي أي أحد من الأخوات أنا ما أشوفكم تفضل عليكم السلام تفضلي السلام عليكم عليكم السلام آه لنجاح عملية التعليم والتعلم في مجتمع المعرفة 
اعتقد انه لابد ان يكون اعداد الطلبه في الفصول غير غير كثير اكثر من 20 او 25 وتوفر بعض معظم التجهيزات في الفصول الا توافقون على ذلك طيب شكرا ايضا سؤال اخر Excuse me, during your presentation, the only thing I can think about is the professional learning community approach for teaching in the school. Is that what you mean? To transform the school into the knowledge base? I think that's exactly what I meant, and that is what the model we developed in the Excellence Center for Science and Mass Education. Um, that's, that is the model we developed, and that is the model we are going ahead and implemented everywhere. Yes, it's about um, a community of learners, a community of practice, and it's for the interaction between students and teachers, and for the students and teachers to equally take the responsibility of their education. And do you have the, uh, the chance to apply it in Saudi Arabia or just develop the model? Why not? Yeah, we developed the model here based on data from Saudi Arabia. And I, I believe that yeah, it's easy to be developed because what we are, what we are talking about is a changing in attitude, a changing on beliefs, which will lead to changing on practice. So why not? For the, for the question before this, um, yes, I agree with you. If we can afford uh, a classroom with 20 or 25, that's fine. However, if not, on the current setting, I think we should look for pedagogies that can deal with these big numbers. So I think we should, be, we should have the green hat of De Bono. It's a creative hat. We, we should think creatively about our settings. طيب أيضا سؤال من الأخوان هنا الأخ هناك مسعد الظفيري من تعليم حفر الباطن دكتور منصور what's your opinion about entry education project if you know about it is that project good for knowledge of society طيب شكرا أيضا سؤال آخر سؤال آخر من الأخوان تفضل هنا طلع خشيه بسم الله دكتور منصور has said that from his dreams to teach every child separately it's not was my it wasn't my quotation it was a student quotation yeah separately by by separated classes or by individual educations or uh, and uh, if there are any uh, examples you can mention for us, inshallah. Can you repeat it again in a different way? Yeah. That's the question. Mm -hmm. uh, ab about uh, uh, to teach every child uh, separately, uh, by class, uh, separated classrooms or by individual educations, or uh, if there are any examples in the world that you can mention. Um, if, I, if I have to answer the, the, the last question, I would say, I'm not, I'm not calling for teaching uh, for uh, a student in separately in, in, in each classroom. What, what we are calling to is, to is to meet the needs for each, each child. I don't think it will work if we take the child out of the context. A child will learn with other chi child. That is the way we all learn. Exchange ideas, exchange experiences. For the, first, for the question before this, sorry, I didn't hear the project well, so I, I don't know if you can repeat it slowly so I can get it and I can respond to your question to say. The first question, please, here. Sorry to Just ask repeat you to your question, again. please. Wait a minute, wait a minute, just wait a minute. Uh, what's your opinion about inter education project? Inter? Inter education. Inter education. Inter education. Uh, I didn't hear about this project. He didn't have any idea about it. Thank no. you. I'm so sorry. The brothers, if there's a question from the brothers, before we take a question here and end. My question is, what has been the most creative and successful method of, se of teaching throughout your career? That's a big. That's a big question, and that's a very challenging question. I Look. Pedagogy is a context-based, okay? And there is no way to say that is the best uh, way or that is uh, the other way. I will have to say a dialogue, thinking together, 
um, argumentation, debate, they are good ideas because they are based on interaction. But the key point we have to talk about is knowledge is a social product. It's com it, it comes from the interaction and the construction by the student. Wh wh whatever you use to, to reach this, that will be fine. Thank you. Aizan, Atina Lakhwan and Mike here. Thank you very much. Dr. Jamal Saeed Alam, IGI Global. I am here. فليتفضل لا لك عليك السؤال معلش بارك الله في حضرتك اوذر ان اي جي اي جلوبال انستيتيوت ان يو اس اي اند اولسو بيزد ان كي اس اي اي ام فروم اجيالنا ايديوكيشنال كو بليز دكتور ناصر ود يو كايندلي ديفاين هاو تو بوت انتو براكتس ذا سايتي اوف نوليدج ان 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 ذا ايديوكيشن براكتس ان كي اس اي ايديوكيشنال سيستم طيب اعطي لك اعطي لك هنا سؤال جنبك تفضل معلش دكتور منصور السلام عليكم السلام عليكم دكتور منصور شكرا على محاضرتك تكلمت عن بيئه التعلم وكيفيه تغييرها انا عندي تجربه في مدرستي حول تغيير بيئه التعلم وهذا لم ينعكس ايجابا على الطالب بل على الطلاب وعلى المعلمين وعلى ايضا اولياء الامور اود منك توضيح المقصود بتغيير بيئه التعلم شكرا شكرا دكتور منصور Um, learning environment is about you have a teacher and student. In the past, or maybe in the current, teacher have the authority. We need to change rules. And that is very simple about the environment. So it's not a physical environment we can talk. It's important to consider the physical environment, but it's the mentality. It's the social capital I'm looking at. Who is have the authority? Nobody should have the authority in the, in the classroom. It should be equal authority and equal responsibility. That's what I meant by learning environment. Okay. That's it? That's it. <laughs> okay. If you want short okay, answer, no, no, we can uh, talk about it too many. Shukra, shukra, shukra. Uh, I have also a question. I mean, Omar Ishaqi also has a question on this point. In the end, I mean, أنا أعتقد أننا في المملكة العربية السعودية مجتمع نملك كامل المقومات في التحول إلى مجتمع المعرفة وأنا أعتقد أننا أيضا يعني نسير في هذا الاتجاه في اتجاه التحول إلى مجتمع المعرفة كما, كما نعلم جميعا مجتمع المعرفة أو متطلبات مجتمع المعرفة هو أولا أن تكون حققت مجتمع المعلوماتية وقبل مجتمع المعلوماتية أو مع مجتمع المعلوماتية لا بد أن يكون أيضا لديك التكنولوجيا اللي اللي تحقق لك دمج المعلوماتية مع التكنولوجيا لتصل من خلالها إلى 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 أن إلى أن تصل إلى مجتمع المعرفة طبعا كما نعلم جميعا أن مجتمع المعلوماتية يتطلب أفكار يتطلب تعليقات يتطلب أمور كثيرة جدا كل هذه الأمور إذا إذا توفرت لدينا شكلت لدينا مجتمع المعلوماتية مجتمع المعلوماتية هذا طبعا إذا إذا وجدت مع التكنولوجيا نستطيع إحنا من خلال هذه التكنولوجيا ومن خلال هذه المعلوماتية أن نستغل هذا المجتمع اللي هو مجتمع المعلوماتية في أمور كثيرة جدا ممكن أن تستغل في عمليات الشراء في عمليات البيع في أمور كثيرة جدا إذا توفرت لديك هذه المقومات كلها تستطيع أن تنتقل من خلالها إلى مجتمع المعرفة مجتمع المعرفة ماذا يتطلب منك يتطلب منك دمج التقنية مع المعلوماتية حتى تستطيع أن تحقق لمجتمعك العدالة تستطيع تحقق لمجتمعك الأمن تستطيع تحقق لمجتمعك التماسك اللحمة كل هذه مكونات أو مخرجات مجتمع المعرفة أنا أعتقد أنه في المملكة العربية السعودية لدينا كل المقومات التي تمكننا من التحول إلى مجتمع المعرفة أيضا تعليمنا أعتقد يعني أن لا نكون متشائمين بدرجة كبيرة جدا وأن نجلد الذات نحن نملك من المقومات في تعليمنا ما يحقق لنا إن شاء الله تعالى أن يقودنا هذا التعليم إلى التحول إلى مجتمع المعرفة المنشود يا أخوان أنا أقول الآن العالم أصبح أيضا تخطى قضية مجتمع المعرفة ومجتمع المعلوماتية ومجتمع التكنولوجيا الآن أصبحت لدينا ما يسمى بالكمبيوتينج بالكلاود كمبيوتينج أصبحت العالم تطور من حولنا بشكل سريع ونحن أيضاً 
لا زلنا نسعى الى ان نصل الى مجتمع المعرفة انا اعتقد ان مقومات مجتمع المعرفة تتحقق لدينا في هذا المجتمع و في الختام يعني اتقدم بالشكر الجزيل باسمكم جميعا للدكتور ناصر منصور ايضا الدكتور اوشو سليمان على هذه المحاضره الشيقه القيمه نعلم جميعا انه قضيه التحول الى المجتمع المعرفه الترانسفورميشن تو نولج سوسايتي يعني موضوع موضوع انترستنج يعني سبجكت موضوع مهم جدا وموضوع ايضا الجميع يعني يود الحديث فيه يود السماع حوله فبالتالي شكرا جميعا لكم منا جميعا على هذا الحضور المميز على هذه المشاركه على هذا الاستماع ثانك يو دكتور اوشو سليمان فور يور نايس برزنتيشن ثانك يو دكتور ناصر ايضا فور يور نايس برزنتيشن ثانك يو فور يو اول السلام عليكم